Hello everyone and welcome to another Live 2D tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a brand new mesh guide. My last one was over a year old now and there is a bunch of new tools available in Live 2D that will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort in making your mesh in Live 2D. And as I've said before, mesh creation in Live 2D is a very, very important skill to have. I would recommend learning it sooner rather than later. And let's get in right into it. So we're going to get started by making a mesh, let's say for our face here. So this is going to be a perfect example of using our new tools, especially. So what we're going to want to do is select our face part. This is our art mesh. And we're going to go up here and select this edit mesh manually tool. Boom. That's going to single it out from all of the rest of our part. So you'll notice that these tool details have popped up on the top left here. So this is going to be everything that we need to edit our mesh in Live 2D. So we're going to go ahead and start with our basic tools. So these are the things that we've had for a long time that were featured in my first video. But we're going to go over it here. So this is the comprehensive guide. The so first thing we're going to need to do is we need to erase this bounding box because we do not need this. Your art mesh will always start off with this basic box. And that is to basically show your actual part. If this box wasn't here, for example, if we deleted this here and then tried to continue without it, it will complain at you because it won't exist without it. And basically, if you have any parts that are not included in a mesh, it will delete it. You won't be able to see it at all. So let's go through the tools at the top here. So first off, you'll notice that there are two pen tools here. There's one with a plus and one with a minus. We're going to be using this plus one a fair amount. So what this one does is it basically allows us to add a point of mesh. So you'll see this red dot going out here. And if I put another one down here, it's going to make a line. And this is the basics of making our mesh. We're going to create triangles of this, basically. So let's complete that triangle. So this is one complete piece of mesh. But obviously this isn't enough to cover our entire head. However, if you made a mistake for any reason, you can use the minus tool to get rid of any points. Like so. So the next button that we have on the list is this. It is more easy to explain with mesh already set up. So we're going to go ahead and set up a box right here. And there's nothing in it. If you click this tool here and basically drag around this area, it will basically create points for you. Like so. So this is useful for covering large areas. So for example, if I set up all around the head, I could use this to basically set up points all within the face. However, it can be a little bit finickety because you may notice with these points, they're very oddly set up. You want your mesh to be as uniform as possible. We're going to go ahead and delete these. And then you'll also notice this ladder tool at the end here, which is the stroke mesh mapping. And this is going to be extremely helpful for our face, actually. So if we go ahead and select this one. And basically what this is going to do is we can draw a line down the contour of our face like so and once we release it will create this line of mesh and the reason why this is extremely helpful for a face is you want to basically create a mesh line around the line of your face and then a larger mesh within the the main body the other thing you can do with this line is you can add points and drag them into where you want so obviously, you're not always going to draw this line on correctly every single time. I mean, I don't. So you're going to need to make edits, of course. But let's just drag these onto the line here. Cover it up. 
So this should be following our line here. Uh, like so. And obviously this would go the full way round, but I can show you another trick that they introduced in the recent update in just a moment. There's a few things we can do in this line. So you'll notice down here we have some mesh mapping settings. The width will increase or decrease the width from the line. So we wanted to increase this a little bit. Let's say around there. So you can see we have a little bit of distance from the line, but it's still close enough that it's not going to introduce any errors. The repeated density will affect the amount of points on this line. So smaller will make them get closer together and increasing will make them further apart. Because it's how many points are on this line. Let's put it around here. So you'll also notice this number of vertices on the mesh width. Now we're going to keep this at two for our face specifically. However, this will change the triangles here. So if we had this at one, it will make it a straight line. And this can have its uses, actually. If you're trying to outline a specific area with mesh, you could do it this way. It'll save you a lot of time just making dots. Or if you had it at free, it will make it into this sort of mesh here. And this is easier for symmetrical parts. But for the face, we are absolutely fine keeping it on too. Now there is also this button, which inverts it. And this is more important if you're trying to set up eyebrows, for example, and you wanted to keep them symmetrical. You can just invert it to how you want it. But this won't see that much use, honestly. All right, and now I'm going to show you one of the most important and cool introductions that they just added in the 4.2 update. And that is mirror. Mirroring. That's right. We can make symmetrical mesh now. Life changer. If you don't know, we used to have to set up, for example, our head here all the way around and we couldn't make it symmetrical but now we can that's right if we are on the add point tool or the stroke mesh mapping tool you will see this new menu which says mirror edit if we turn that on it will come up with this green line and this is going to be the center of our symmetry so you can see it's slightly off where i want it here what I'm going to want to do is change this axis position right here. And I can click and drag this to bring the line over to where I want it. It's going to be about there. And we're obviously going to have it on vertical. There is a way to make it horizontal as well. So you can do it the other way. But obviously, since we're doing the face, it will be vertical like that and when we draw on here like that boom both sides easily done and you'll notice when i change my green points again it is changing on both sides so that's an extremely easy way to set up symmetrical pieces like our face in my original video i did go through the basic principles of making your mesh and you may have remembered me mentioning about triangles triangles are very important you'll notice in this auto created mesh they are in triangles and you should continue to do so even in large areas like our face here if i was to do this we're going to make want to make triangles across our face like so and this is basically going to cover our entire shape here with parts like our face um we're going to want to tighten mesh around the line and this is because this is the most heavily deformed area with our skin part there's not much detail in it 
So we can have a lot looser mesh like these big triangles. You have to really think about how is this part going to move? How do we want our mesh to look? All right. And finally, I'm going to cover a little bit about auto mesh. So auto mesh is technically still a very handy tool, even though it's generally more advisable to make your own mesh. You can get around some ways by using the auto mesh and then editing them. So we're going to go ahead and grab that up. And there will be three presets, standard, little and heavy. And this is basically trying to decide how much is your item going to deform? Is it complicated? Not very complicated. But we're just going to go standard here. This is going to put our basic mesh on. And you may notice the problem with using the auto mesh is you might get areas like this here. So you'll see this looks messy. This, this isn't good. We want everything to look like nice things. So we're going to open up our auto mesh again. And you'll notice there are some settings down here. Vertices, spacing, margins. What are, what are all of these? Well, vertices spacing will affect the space between each little dot. So it adds more, as you can see. The boundary margin outside will affect how far these outer dots are to your art piece. So if I decrease this, it will get closer to it. You don't want this to be too close, obviously. Let's say there. And the inside will affect these dots in particular. So just on the second row and if we decrease that it will get closer to it so you do have a little bit of control with auto mesh and obviously we can change this and see if it comes up any better so for this part i'd say i definitely don't want to use it here but what i could do is increase this with our points like this with the auto mesh set up I quite like this middle part. This, this looks pretty good to me, but it's just the outer edges that I don't like. So I can go ahead and erase the parts that I don't want. So this looks pretty clean here. And then I could use my mirror tool again to set up the outer lines and then finish off the mesh. And that would save me a lot of time. But generally, as a rule of thumb, don't use auto mesh for unless you're going to edit them. Um, there are some specific parts where you might be able to get away with just a tweaked auto mesh, but if any part of it looks like it's clumped together or spaced too far apart or generally just not uniform, you're going to want to erase that and make it cleaner, basically. And you'll thank yourself later for this because it really affects your deformation on parts. So thank you for watching this updated guide to mesh in Live 2D. If you liked the video, then please do be sure to give this video a like. It really does help support the channel. Also, if you're looking for more Live 2D tutorials or VTube Studio stuff, I do make videos all the time on my YouTube channel. So do feel free to subscribe and stay notified of when I upload. And if you have any Live 2D related questions, then do be sure to leave us a comment. I do make sure to read every one as soon as I can and answer all of your burning questions. Even if it isn't about mesh, feel free to leave it down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.